What's going on, guys? And welcome back to some more Planet Coaster. We're back in Cedar Flags, and we are doing a little bit more building. Now, this episode I actually set out with the mindset of maybe doing a smaller episode this week because I figured I need to record City Skylines because I got that game back and working after the recent patch, so I wanted to kind of keep this episode a little lighter. But as it turns out, I actually recorded about five hours of footage, so we're pretty much at a full length episode here and the time lapse I think is around 15 minutes or so so uh, sit back and enjoy this one I guess and I think in the end we I do have a couple decisions to make and I do want your input on it like I always try to get so yes we got a few design questions in mind so uh, be prepared for that toward the end of the episode but what are we doing in this episode so we needed some sort of plaza up here something to fill out this area next to the main path in the park and I needed something that's gonna have a drink stall and probably like a food stall so I ended up making this awesome little plaza and spending way too much time doing this fountain right here that you see me working on um, I, I like that you can build your own stuff in this game so like they give you that base of a fountain they're like here you do it and you can you can spend way too much time building simple stuff that looks amazing so uh, props to this game but yeah, you can see me, uh, I put the mermaid in, that's a classic tale of a, uh, of a fountain, no, no pun intended there, but we're filling up some of the, uh, small border of it, I don't know borders the right word, but the, uh, the round bricks there with these bushes, and I really like how this kind of fills it out, so instead of, like, a path below it, you kind of see, like, some greenery going on, and actually, I just placed a fountain down, and I had to laugh because the fountain actually went up over the height of the uh, roller coaster Alpine Spirit in the park so it's a fountain that literally shoots up over 150 feet into the air which I found humorous but uh, anyway we're going through placing some water effects here uh, because the water I guess technically doesn't have physics to it like it doesn't land in in a, pond, a pool of water and make a splash so luckily they did give us some effects to make it look like that is happening so yeah this is actually my first time playing around with the water in this game so uh yeah a little bit of getting used to but it's really not that tricky the building tools and terrain uh terraforming stuff is way trickier in my opinion but yeah so i i placed this fountain and i figured it's gonna have to light up somehow and a lot of this game i feel like moving forward is gonna be trying to find a way to place lights in the scenery and make it look good. Uh, so I did come up with this kind of tiered platform with a light embedded in it. I don't know if that's an accurate description of what I made, but uh, yeah, once again, I am going to be putting this fountain on the Steam collection, the workshop collection for this uh, series, so make sure you check that out. The link, as always, is in the description. So, yeah, all of this stuff is going in there. Um, we're just kind of filling out the rest of this fountain with some more green space just to kind of fill up that little rung of, uh, I guess, just nothingness. It needed something there. And I liked how the round bushes went in there and made it look cool, but these the longer flat bushes went in there just to kind of fill up the rest of the space. But moving on, we are placing some of the path... Uh, decoration is I don't know what you really call these Just benches and uh, trash bins maybe path accessories I don't know but yeah anyway we're placing those down and there's really not that much of a selection of trash bins at this point so I don't know hopefully we get some more in the future and benches too I mean there's not really a huge selection at this point in the game but if I if I can judge this game by uh, probably like Roller Coaster Tycoon 3, we are definitely going to get expansions in the future, and uh, yeah, hopefully themed expansions would be nice. I mean, if they go the route of like City Skylines where they put up some DLC on the workshop or on Steam with just like five bucks for a new theme, I, I think that'd be okay. Maybe four, three, three or four bucks. Either way, I mean, I feel like that's a good. DLC kind of type model for this game um, and probably eventually if we're going by Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 standards we are going to get a, a water park expansion coming up at some point so 
Uh, be on the lookout for that, I guess, if you're excited about water parks. And for some reason, I don't know, I've never been huge into water park parks. I've always been pretty big with theme parks and just rides and roller coasters. And if you can't tell by the title of this park, or the name of this park, rather, uh, Cedar Flags is kind of like a play on Cedar Point and Six Flags. And that's really what I kind of wanted to model this park on. I don't think I really even talked about this yet in this series, but I want to have more of a park that's focused on roller coasters. So that's what we're going to be doing in this in this playthrough. Uh, not so much like heavy themed areas, but we are going to be theming different parts of the park. But uh, yeah, so my roller coasters probably won't be like filled out with a bunch of triggers and special effects per se. I mean, we're going to do some of that. Don't get me wrong, but uh, we're going to focus more on the ride itself and just the overall experience of it more than just, I guess, building dark rides and that kind of stuff. That's not to say that we won't go ahead and do that at some point. But uh, right now what I'm doing is going ahead and placing the building that's going to be housing our coffee and fry, I think, the French fry stand. Uh, Monsieur Fre Fritas? Fritas? I, I'm, not, I'm not French, nor do I claim to be. So, um, yeah, some of the wording and stuff is a little iffy for me, but I'm sure you guys can uh, correct me if I'm wrong. And actually, you know... Um, Every time you place down a sign from one of the themed stands, it does tell you the name, so I guess I should probably know that, but uh, anyway, onto this building. Uh, you can see that we're kind of doing a bit of a different theme to it. So this part in the park, I figured if we were going to start to theme it or build a different style on this building, it would have to be here. I mean, we've been pretty much sticking to the straight up brick theme. Uh, for the entrance and that first souvenir style, or f souvenir stand rather, and I really want to start breaking away from that because I don't want this entire park to just have that style. So I'm obviously still using the brick wall for the upper part of this building, and the base of it's actually a very bright white stucco, and at first I really didn't know how I felt about this. like. In this game especially, I tend to find a bunch of objects that I actually, I really like together. And I just, for some reason, I have like a hard time going and breaking away from that because I know that works so well together. So it's really weird to kind of just branch out and try to expand. And this, the whole time I was building this building, it was kind of like that. Like I was like, I don't really know if this is going to end up looking good. I don't know if this is going to fit. It's going to be a little out of place, but I don't know. I just, I think I pushed through that and there's actually a really unique part or point I can kind of put my finger on where I was like, you know what? This building looks great. So I will, I think I'll point that out when we get to it, but yeah, it just like I keep, I kept going back and like taking the camera back and just like looking at it from a distance. Like, ah, I don't know how I feel about this. And then eventually I end up, I think, adding just one little detail and it just pulled the entire building together. And yeah, um, you can see me right now actually putting or replacing the trim that I put on top of the of the of the roof, not on top, but up top of the walls. Ended up replacing that a few times and I actually found a trick. If you hold F as you are uh, placing a scenery item, you can actually snap it to another piece of scenery. So you saw me place all of those trims kind of in the middle of all of the walls, and this actually worked out really well. So I'd, I'd hold F, I'd place the trims all in the same spot, so you knew it was in the same level, and instead of just placing these one by one, I placed them all around, and I just grabbed them all and pulled them all up to the top. So you know they're A, perfectly um, on the same horizontal plane, and B, they're perfectly spaced and butted up next to each other just right. And uh, yeah, that's a really interesting trick that I uh, hope you guys can maybe take from this, if nothing else, and use. But this building in particular was kind of strange to me. Uh, I, I'm really, really used to just building in basically one grid. And this building obviously has a couple grids going on. So if you want to build a building with like an angular wall like we have going on right now, you have to build two separate buildings and kind of, I guess, place them together and merge them together. And it's it's kind of daunting. Like, the, 
it's just very strange at first to do that. But uh, in the end, it's okay. And I think the biggest thing that made this not such a challenge, I guess, is that I didn't have to actually put a roof on the on the angled part. It just kind of I put a plaza or a, a terrace maybe uh, up on the top, and uh, that kind of accounted for that. So that was kind of nice. But yeah, anytime you can get like a workaround to some I iffy problem in this game, it's probably best to use it at this point. Uh, anyway, uh, right now I'm just placing this other door on the other side, kind of on this main, uh, I guess not main street, but a side street. Uh, I just, I don't know. This whole area, I had like, I had placed that first plaza down and I stopped playing as I tend to do. And I just, I thought about it for a little bit. I came back to it and I just, I had to figure out some way to make this area look okay. And for whatever reason, it was really tricky. But once I got in my mind, like, what I kind of wanted to do, I ended up going through and, I guess, making it how I wanted. And it, it comes out nice, I think. And I'm sure you guys can let me know. Um, but, yeah, I, I kind of actually didn't finish this entire building. You'll see toward the end. I don't even know if I ended up keeping all of it in the time lapse. But there are... Like, from a certain angle, this looks finished, but if you turn around to the back of the building, it's not even done yet. So, yeah, I'm definitely going to want your guys' input on that, which is why I actually stopped uh, stopped building this. Plus, I kind of ran out of time because I did want to get an episode out for you guys. Right now, I am going through and I'm placing these bushes in the wall, the brick walls here. Kind of like what we did in the front of the park, and I, I really like that I could carry influence from that over to this. And this ends up just kind of being a planter for us. But behind the planter, completely, I guess, not opposite. Yeah, opposite of the plaza. I wanted to do like a raised path. And that's another thing in this game that I had no experience with. But uh, we, we made it work. And actually, before I talk about that, I, I really, really enjoy using this, this plant, the Scavola or whatever. I don't really know how to pronounce that, but that plant the ground cover looks great when you just line it in a uh, in a planter or a bed. It looks awesome. It looks way better than just the default grass, but the trees you see me messing with, I, I okay, I, I've been using like the Douglas fir and the pine trees way too much, I think so I did kind of want to take this away from that a little bit. I wanted to kind of start to incorporate a different tree type into this area and I still am not convinced that I like it too much I don't know there's just something about it that's a little iffy to me so I don't know I tried to keep it like a darker tree just to kind of fit with the overall feel of the alpine region but uh, I guess you guys can let me know if you if it looks out of place we can always change it but you see me right now going through and uh, doing this raised path and yeah this was just kind of something unique and new to me. I have not done many of the raised path work. Uh, I mean, I guess we did in the Alpine Spirit build, but for like a plaza, have not done any of that just yet. And it was kind of kind of interesting. I had to actually go through and take the select the grid for that uh, coffee shop and end up actually going through and building off of that. So I think the pre-planning that I had gone ahead with was a, a huge part of making this easy. You saw me earlier on in the time lapse actually place like a roof down um, where the path would be off of the shop and kind of just move the entire building to where it needed to be. And I think that definitely helped out in the long run. But uh, what you're seeing me do right now is go through and do some very, very advanced uh, bush placement. I mean, um, I had to do something here to make this look okay, and I think just having the wall butt up into that uh, path was not going to work because the path actually goes down. So I needed the wall to go down with it, and in the end, I think it actually worked out fairly well. But um, yeah, I, we're now <laughs> nearing the end of the time lapse, and we're just doing a little bit more uh, uh, detail work around the Sky Fox Coffee. And, uh, yeah, every time you place a sign, you have, like, this valley girl say, Sky Fox Coffee! And, oh my god, it was annoying. But, uh, yeah, every time you made a move, it was the same thing over and over. But, yeah, I don't know. 
we got over that real quick and uh, <laughs> yeah uh, but we're just placing a couple awnings here to finish out this time lapse and like I said when you step back and just look at this it looks really good and I was really unsure of it at first but I think in the end it comes out great but this is the end of the time lapse here and we'll go right into the live portion and uh, you guys can let me know what you think all right guys so here we are at the new plaza that's in the park and if you didn't notice from the video it's actually to the left of the main walkway here across from the uh, very nice Venetian carousel which actually got a sign in between episodes and I actually put this down before and it didn't save so I had to recreate it but you know no big deal I'm a sign guy in real life so that took me like little to no time at all I am not however a fountain guy and this uh, this took a while but in the end I really really enjoy how this came out I love how this water is kinda angled in and we just have the jumping fountains on the sides of it and I actually didn't notice that it makes makes sound. So that is really cool. But yes, behind that you can see the coffee and the Monsieur Freites. Freites? Freites? You guys can make fun of me for that. But um, yes, that's there. And the rest of the building is kind of placed here. And we'll talk about that in a second. But you can see the tree difference here. Like I was kind of talking about, these four trees here and then these three this one and these three are swamp trees I believe and I I like how they kind of look in comparison to the rest of the trees it's pretty much kind of the same feel but uh yeah it's technically not an alpine tree but right here I have a Douglas fir and then I have I think a different brand of tree if brand is the word style family whatever of tree there and um yeah, I don't know about the Douglas fir. I may or may not take that out. I just don't want it, like, obscuring the view of this uh, building. But I think from, like, guest height, you can pretty much still see all of that. And if we actually go back to, like, the entrance area, it's, it's, it's okay. It, the signs, I think, draw enough attention to the area that people know what's over there. But... Um, yeah, you may not see a plaza straight away, but as you walk more toward it and try to figure out a way to get into this area, you can, uh, figure out the plaza there. But yes, this was the building that took way too long, and I had actually talked about a turning point when I went from not liking this building to liking it, and I think I cut it out, but it was when I placed this middle, like, uh, stucco paneling, or trim, I guess. That's when this whole building kind of came together for me, and actually I'm just gonna lock, oops, lock the time to about uh, 10 a.m. works for me, but, um, yeah, when I put that paneling on, it, it really pulled it together, because before that, you could just kind of, uh, if I go in here and just delete maybe this, there's just like a weird divide between this brick that we've been using on the other uh, buildings and then this brand new like white stucco here and it just didn't look good but once I put that together it kind of pulled the entire thing together and I really really like how it came out and with the iv ivy call crawling up the wall um, really it pulls a little bit of influence from this because we do have some ivy on those walls as well but uh, yeah so you can walk over here and if I get out of uh, this building here if you go ahead and walk down through here, um, you can kind of see the plaza. This is where I imagine most people would come and sit down and maybe have a coffee or eat before they go out to the rest of the park. And then, of course, we have this really cool little uh, arched walkway, arch curved walkway, rather. And then you get the, uh, f the Sky Fox coffee, which I guess I could show you the girl who says Sky Fox coffee. It was like every time I moved this. Or maybe it wasn't. Street Fox Coffee. Street Fox Coffee, not Sky Fox Coffee, but... Street Fox Coffee. Yeah, every time you move it. So, uh, yeah, that got annoying pretty quickly. Anyway, um, before we wrap this episode up, uh, this building right here, it's like a modern type building with these, these windows here. I was very unsure of that. So I did want to get your input on that. And then, of course, the f the fry stand here is going to stay like this. 
Um, we could change the wall material here, and I actually... No, no. I thought they were two different style bricks, but they are not. But, yeah, actually, if I walk around to the back here, you can see that it's it's very much a facade at this point. Like, uh, from here, it looks great. But, um, yeah, if you walk around, it's not quite done. So my intention is to have maybe another building or two in this, like, row of buildings here. Just to kind of give it that illusion that this is, like, a a bit of, like, a street instead of just a walkway in a theme park. So that's going to be cool. And then back here, I'm not sure what we're going to do. This building will probably end about here. And then I think this walkway is going to continue. And we're probably going to have some sort of ride back throughout here. So I'm thinking maybe like those cars or maybe even a roller coaster. And then we're going to have to work through here. But I think after we get this building kind of built with your input, I want you guys to let me know if this modern building is too much. Maybe should I go more like a... I don't even know what style building these would be, like a European Victorian style, almost. Should I do more of that over here, or should I keep this as is, and then on these buildings maybe go more of this kind of feel? I'm kind of leaning toward that, although, yeah, I'm not really sure about that whole thing, so let me know about that. But I think after we get that done and built, maybe we place one more ride, and then I think we're good to open. We're going to be uh, ready to start going ahead with the park operations and I am I'm excited for that I'm I know some of you are probably sitting here like thinking stop building just open the damn park but no it, it's not ready yet it needs to have something to do I, I, I really feel bad for the guys who walk into this park or these parks and uh, there's like one ride and they came in and they're like oh I just had a ferris wheel and uh, that's about it. Yeah, so I'm thinking that that's the plan in the next episode. I still want to do, like, a locker area over here that's still in the cards. And, um, yeah, moving past that, I'm not really sure. So we'll just kind of play it as we go. I'm going to look for your guys' feedback in the comments of this video uh, regarding this whole build and uh, the future of this building. I'm not sure what you guys want to see out of this. And, uh, yeah, I guess that's gonna be it, guys. So if you like this one, leave a thumbs up. If you disliked it, leave a thumbs down, of course. And, uh, yes, if you're, uh, looking forward to the next episode, uh, thumbs up. But, guys, until then, I'll be back here building some more in Cedar Flags. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.